All right, you guys, so welcome back. So today's topic is going to be even and odd functions. So if we're talking about math definitions, I'm going to read you a definition that it may not be as clear, but we're going to break it down, okay? So no worries. So math definition is that for even functions, you should have something such that f of x equals f of negative x for every x in the domain of f of x. For odd functions, negative f of x should equals f of negative x. Now, what does this mean? <laughs> that was a lot of um, a lot of notations in there, right? So, for even, it means that when you have opposite inputs, and by opposite we mean that they have different signs. So when we have opposite inputs, so that's x values. We get the same output. So if that happens, if you have opposite inputs that give you the same output, then you would say this function is even. And we'll do some examples later on. So for odd, we're still going to start off with opposite inputs. So for odd, we have opposite inputs. And then we have opposite output. So notice how this one is negative here. So we have opposite outputs. Okay, so now I think if you remember the wording, it may actually help you more than the actual math definition. All right, so we're going to use those definitions to work through this example below. So are the following even or odd? So you have two of them, this is A and this is B. And you really just have to test it out to see if it's even or odd. It could also be neither, meaning it doesn't fall under being even or odd, and that's okay. So here's how you can test it out. There's a really nice way that you can test it out just for you to know what the answer is, but it's not going to be good enough for algebra, okay? So... It's important to know it because it may help you figure out if you got it right or wrong. But we're going to learn the algebraic way as well. So let's just pick two points. Now for both of them, you're going to start off with opposite inputs. So whether, whether you're even or odd, that's how we always start. And just a little reminder, right? We always start with opposite inputs. The only difference is the output. So you can pick any number. I'm going to pick two. So I'm going to make a positive two and a negative two. And then I'm going to see what I get for my output. So 2 squared is going to be 4. So that's my output. Negative 2 squared also gives me 4. So that gave me the same output. So because it gave me the same output, I can say, yep, this is going to be even. Now, like I said, this is not enough for an algebraic explanation. So if you were to write this in a quiz or anything like that, you will not get credit. Okay, so we need an algebraic way to show this. And the way that we do it is with our function notation. So we're going to start it off with your f of x and your f of negative x. Because this implies opposite inputs. So that's what we're going to start off with. Now f of x is just your original function, so in this case it's only x squared f of negative x tells me that I have to substitute a negative x inside of there. So you end up with this. Now remember that a negative squared is always going to be a positive. So this is going to become x squared. And here's how you get to the reasoning, hey, these are exactly the same. So this is going to be even. So this is the algebraic way to show this, OK? All right, so now let's go ahead and test out B. And we're going to do it both ways as well. We're going to choose some numbers. I'm going to stick with the same numbers here. We're going to start off with 2 and negative 2. Remember that we always start off the same. We're going to test them out. So 2 cubed, that's going to be give me 8. If I put negative 2 cubed, negative 2 times negative 2 gives me a positive 4. And 4 times that remaining negative 2 is going to give me a negative 8. So 
I have an output of eight for the first one and an output of negative eight for the second one. Now, based on this, I got opposite outputs. So I know that this is going to be odd because these are opposite outputs. Now, again, not good enough for algebra. So that's good for you to know. So we're going to start off the same way. We're going to do f of x and f of negative x. <clears throat> so here we're showing, hey, we're inputting opposite inputs. Okay, f of x is our original. That's our x cubed. And for this one, we have to input the negative x. So negative x cubed, you have three negatives in there. So negative and a negative is going to be a positive. Positive times a negative is going to be a negative. So this is going to end up with being a negative x cubed. So with this one is really nice because you can kind of immediately see, hey, that one's positive and this one's negative, right? So they're opposite. Now this not it may not be as simple as this because you may get some equations that are a little more complicated. And you may have to actually factor out, which in this case, if I factor out the negative, it would just look like this. Right? But that's more clear that, hey, there's a negative outside of there. I know that that's going to be opposite. Now, for this case, it's not necessary. It's very clear. But when you have more than one term, this may be something you need to do in order to make sure that it's actually opposite. Okay. So we're going to leave it like this, and we're now going to say this is odd. Now we're going to move on to graphing, because there is a nice way that you can tell whether these are even or odd based on the graph. So consider the partial graph. This means the graph is incomplete. That's what that means. OK, so we're going to complete the graph. Sketch the other half of the function. In A, f of x is even. OK, so we're looking for this one being even and for b being odd. Now they did give us some points, so we can actually use these to make our graph. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with rewriting these points. Now we know that for even and for odd, we always start off with opposite inputs. Now that zero is gonna stay at the zero. This is gonna be a negative three. That's gonna be a negative seven. And likewise on this side. Okay, so for the outputs, when you're even, you are exactly the same. So we're just going to write exactly the same thing. And when you're odd, you're opposite. Zero stays the same. This is going to be a negative five, and that's going to be a positive two. The rest is just plotting. So I'm going to do my magic real quick and just plot it, and then I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. So. For your even function, I want you to notice in terms of reflections, hopefully you can see that this is a reflection over the y-axis. So if you notice, if I were to split the graph right there, it would literally be a mirror image over the y. So for even, the really, really nice thing is that you can kind of just know that it's even if you see that it has a reflection over the y-axis. Now for this, we also tend to call it and we say, hey, that means that this is symmetrical over the y-axis. So that's just another way to say it. Okay, so that's for even. For odd, this one may not be as clear to you, but hopefully some of you guys notice. So for this one, it had, there were two rotations happening. So for this one, it first does a reflection over the y. So picture the same reflection as the even. So something like this, don't quote me on this if I mess up on the, on the points, but something like that. It did that first, and then it did a reflection over the x. So notice how there it flipped it over the x, and that's how we ended up with our actual graph. You can also think of that as a rotation of 180 degrees. So for odd function, let's write both of them. So we have reflection over the y-axis first. 
and then it has a reflection over the x. Okay, another way that we can think about this is that it has a rotation of 180 degrees. So the way that we say this one the most, because if you notice, the origin plays a really interesting point here. Let me get a different color. So if we reflect over the origin per se, think about it this way, like this point right here, it went this amount of units and that same amount of units to get to that point. So it really reflected over your origin. So the way that we say this is that this is symmetrical across the origin. So I would say if you're going to remember any of these, this is the one you want to remember. Symmetrical across the origin. So have you ever noticed and you find a graph in where it did a reflection over the y and then a reflection over the x? Or you notice the correlation between the origin and both parts of the graph, then you can say, yep, that's an odd function based on those points. Now, picking out some points like this may also be helpful. But remember that for algebraically, right, we always want to show it with the actual function notation. All right, you guys, and that is all for today. See you tomorrow.